Hey y'all, it's Alicia, and today I'm going to be showing you how I got this look using the Naked 3 palette by Urban Decay. This is pretty much my go-to look when I'm in a hurry, but I still want to look put together, and I've had so many compliments when I wear it, so I thought that I would do this look for my first makeup tutorial. I did add false lashes and a lip color today. Normally, if I'm in a hurry, I will just put on some chapstick or some lip gloss just so I'll have something on my lips because I can't stand for my lips to be dry. And obviously, if I'm in a hurry, I will just add some extra coats of mascara to my natural lashes. So false lashes and lipstick are completely optional. It's just whatever you are more comfortable with. So if you want to see how I got this look, just keep watching. Okay, so I'm starting off with the Photo Finish Foundation Primer by Smashbox. To be completely honest with you, I'm just using this primer because it's the only one I had at the time. I normally like the Stay Flawless 15 Hour Primer from Benefit, but I'm actually out of it right now, so I'm just using the Smashbox one, but it gets the job done. Normally, if I'm in a hurry, sometimes I forget to use primer, but if I know I'm having a long day, I always try to include a face primer in my routine. I am now going in with the Born This Way Foundation by Too Faced, and I am in the shade Natural Beige. And I'm just going to be applying it with the Sigma F80 Flat Kabuki Brush. I absolutely love this foundation. As you can see, I have a bit of redness around my nose, and that just covers it right up. I highly recommend this if you want a medium to full coverage foundation. It isn't as thick as most full coverage foundations, but it still has really good coverage, and it doesn't make you look cakey, so I highly recommend it. And now it looks like I am picking my nose, but I'm actually applying a red corrector. As I mentioned before, I have a lot of redness around my nose, and I wanted to cover that up just a little bit more. And for those of you who don't know, green cancels out red, so that is the shade I'm using. And I also have a couple of red blemishes on my nose, so I am covering those up as well. And now I'm going to go in with the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, and I am in shade NW25, and I'm going to attempt to cover up my dark circles. I'm just going to apply a little bit right underneath my eye. I'm not going to do anything dramatic because this is kind of the same shade as my foundation, so I just want to use that to conceal instead of highlighting and I'm just going in with the Real Technique sponge to just blend that out. Now to highlight underneath my eyes, I'm going in with the Urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer and I am in the shade Light Neutral. I am just making a triangle shape underneath my eye and around my nose and I know it looks a little bit crazy but of course we are going to blend it out. I just want it to look really bright underneath my eyes so I look nice and awake and be sure to always drag it up to your hairline as well because you're wanting to highlight and really open up your eyes so you want to apply that to the tops of your cheekbones as well. Now I'm just going in with a big powder brush to set my foundation. I am just using a translucent setting powder. You can use any type of setting powder that you want. If you use a liquid foundation, I highly recommend using some type of powder to set in your foundation. Not only is it going to help your foundation stay on longer, but if you have oily skin, it's going to absorb the excess oil throughout the day. And it also helps you to blend out your contouring better and your other powder products such as highlighters and blushes. So I shouldn't have done this first, but I'm just going in with a smaller brush 
to really get in underneath my eyes and set that so there's no creasing. For contouring, I'm going to be going in with Hoola Bronzer by Benefit and I'm just going to be using the little brush that comes with it because it's the perfect size for my face. And where you want to contour on your cheeks is right at the hollows underneath your cheekbones. You'll notice I'm making the lovely fishy face. It looks silly but that's the best way to tell where your contour should go. And you'll notice I am starting at the back working my way forward. The back near the hairline is where you want it to be darkest because that gives you a lifted appearance. And who doesn't like a nice and lifted face? Now I'm just going to go back in with that big powder brush and just blend everything out. I don't like to have any harsh lines or very sharp contour, so I'm just blending it out. Now I'm going in with a blush brush from Real Techniques. I love this one. And I am using the blush Melba by MAC. Once again, you want to start at the back and work your way forward. Whenever you first put your brush down, that's where the most product is going to be. And like I said, you want to be darker at the hairline because it makes your face appear more tight and lifted. And once again, going back in with the powder brush just to blend, blend, blend. Now I'm going in with Champagne Pop by Becca and Jaclyn Hill, and I am just using a Morphe M501 brush to apply that. I absolutely love this highlight. It's so pretty, just a beautiful champagne color. It was named well. And I'm also going to be going in with the Champagne Glow palette, also by Becca and Jaclyn Hill. And I am using the shade Pearl. Thank Pearl was just limited edition for this palette, but they have now made it permanent. I love mixing Pearl and Champagne Pop together. It's just so pretty. And I'm just putting it on the bridge of my nose, the end of my nose, and on my Cupid's bow. I cannot get enough highlighter. Now I am just going to fill in my brows. I am using the Tarte Amazonian Clay Waterproof Brow Mousse in Medium Brown and just the brush that comes with it. I think that is the perfect size to fit right there at the beginning of my brow because I don't like it to be very sharp at the beginning so this brush is perfect for that. So it always takes me longer than it should to do my brows and to do other people's brows when I do my clients. So I'm just going to fast forward through doing my brows. I am now going in with the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion in Original just to prime my eyelids. I always put it on with the applicator and then go back in with my fingers just to smooth it all out. I love this eyeshadow primer. It works so well for me. I can definitely tell a difference just in the pigmentation of my eyeshadow and it also doesn't crease on my eyes either and it helps my shadow stay on all day long. Next, I am going in with the Urban Decay 24-7 Waterline Eye Pencil in the color Mood. It is just a dark gray and obviously going to line my waterline. <laughs> I always like to scrunch my eyes together like that to get it up on the top waterline without having to actually line the top one. Now I'm just using a small definer brush from Real Techniques. And I'm just going to go in with the Naked Basics in the darkest color They're called Crave just to set my waterline. I have tried using the waterline pencil by itself, but unfortunately it does fade by the end of the day, so I always like to set it with an eyeshadow. And once again, I'm just squeezing my eyeshadow to get it up on the top waterline as well.
I know this is the Naked 3 tutorial, but I'm going in with the shade WOS in the Naked Basics and just using a eyeshadow brush. This one is from Sigma. It is the E55, and I'm just going to apply that shade all over the lid just to even out the skin tone, and you can use any type of nude or skin tone color. It doesn't have to be this specific one. So we are going to start with the shade Limit in the Naked 3 palette and I'm going to be applying this with the Sigma E40 Tapered Blending Brush. This is my absolute favorite brush. I love it. And this is going to be our transition color. So we're going to apply this right above the crease. This is the shade that is going to be the highest in this look today. Next, I'm going to be going in with the shade Nooner. This is one of my favorite crease colors. I don't know if you can tell, but I am starting to hit pan. And you'll notice that I'm starting off with the Sigma E40. I decided that I would rather use the Naked 3 brush that just comes with this palette. And I'm using the fluffier side. It is a little bit denser than the blending brush. So I wanted to add a little bit more product so you'll notice that I'm just packing it on, just going sloppy. It doesn't have to be precise because I'm going to go back and blend that out. So now I'm just going back in with the blending brush just to blend everything so there's no harsh lines. Next, I am going in with a shade Dark Side, and I'm going to apply this to my crease as well, concentrating only on the crease. You will see me blending upwards, but I don't have any product on my brush. I'm just making sure that all the shadows are blended out nicely and that there are no sharp lines. But I have a bit of hooded eyes, so I want my darkest shadow to be right there in my crease. That way it makes my eyelids appear bigger and you don't notice the hood as much. I'm now using that same eyeshadow brush that I used to apply my base color and I'm going in with the shade Strange. It is the lightest in the palette and I'm going to apply this all over my eyelid. Using a light shade like this will also help my lids appear bigger. You want to start off by packing the shadow on the lid because it will give you the most color payoff. And then once you get that first initial product on your eye, then you can start blending it out. So I decided that I wanted a little bit more shimmer on my eyelid, so I'm now going in with the color Dust, just right on top of Strange. This step is completely unnecessary, just something that I wanted to add to my look personally. Now I'm using a shadow brush from Real Techniques. I'm not sure the exact name because it has worn off, and I'm going in with the color Black Heart. So I'm just going to apply this just messy onto the corner eyelid and up into the crease. Like I said, I'm just going to apply this messy because you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna go back in with my handy dandy blender brush and blend it out. I am adding a little bit more product just to make it a little bit darker. And I'm starting on the outside because that's where I want it to be darkest. And I'm just blending that on into the inner corner. It's finally coming together. Once again, I'm going back in with the Naked Basics and I'm going to use the shade Venus. This is my absolute favorite brow bone highlighter. So I'm using a MAC 242 brush and just adding this right underneath my eyebrows. If you don't have the Naked Basics, I highly recommend it. It is good for everyone. It's great for travel because you can go easily from a daytime look to a smoky or nighttime look.
Now for mascara, I'm going in with the Roller Lash by Benefit. I love this mascara. It's supposed to take the place of your eyelash curler, but I don't ever use one. So I'm glad that I found a mascara that will actually give that effect without having to use one. And it still has the small bristles where it really gets in there and separates your lashes. Plus the packaging is just so cute. To finish off this look, I'm going in with the MAC Cream Sheen in Modesty. It's the first time I'm using this lipstick with this look because I just got it a couple of weeks ago. And I am loving this color. It's one of my new favorite lipsticks. It's in the same color family as the Naked 3 palette, so I think that's why it works so well with this look. So that completes this look. Like I said, the lipstick is completely optional. I normally just throw on some chapstick or lip gloss. But I hope that you enjoyed this look and until next time, bye y'all.